Hey guys, Sean Dove here, back with another Cinema 4D quick tip. Today I wanted to take a look at how we can set up these really nice fluid animations inside Cinema 4D, and we're going to be taking advantage of vertex maps to actually drive the animation. This is something I've actually been trying to get my head around for a little while now, especially since I introduced the field system to work with and affect the vertex maps. Now, if you happen to follow me on Instagram, you might have actually already seen some of these fluid animations that we're going to try and attack today. And we're actually doing this because some of you guys reached out and asked how I went about the whole technique. So if there's anything else you guys want to try and figure out, reach out and we'll see if we can figure it out together. All right, let's jump in. We'll have a bit of a play. All right, guys, let's boot up in cinema and we'll jump straight in. And we just had a quick look at the little animation style that we're going to try and set up today. Now, in those little examples you just saw, I set that up purely on a plane. So let's, so let's drop a plane into our scene and we'll set them up the exact same way. I'm going to drop a camera into my scene as well, just so we can look down directly onto our plane. So let's rotate our camera both minus 90 in both the heading and the pitch. And then we can grab our plane and just hit S and that's going to allow us to frame up above that. Beautiful. Now we also want this plane to fill our scene. We could just zoom in a little bit here so we don't have to give ourselves any extra height. But let's just increase our width a bit here, just so we're beyond our frame. Looks like a width of 700 there is gonna work perfectly. Nice, I'm gonna hit MB to reveal our polygons and we need to get a much higher poly count into our plane here. When working with vertex maps, the higher the poly count that we have, the nicer the animation's gonna be. So let's, so let's increase this. Let's try something like 200 in both, in both our width and height segments. I'm actually thinking if I can decrease our height of our plane a little bit, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit further. All right, nice. We've now got a pretty even polygon count here. Nice, and we've got a nice dense mesh. All right, I'm gonna hit C on my plane. And now that we've, and now that we've got our camera in a position we're happy with, I'm just gonna lock that off as well. And we can do that by coming up to tags, cinema 4D tags, and then come down to protection. And then I'll just make sure if we move around our scene, we won't stuff up that camera position. Nice, so we've made our plane editable. Let's come over here and we'll grab our points. Now we don't need to have any selected, but let's come up to select. And I'm gonna come down to set vertex weight. Having this at a value of 0% is gonna be fine. I'm gonna hit okay, and instantly everything's gonna turn red. And over here, it's created a vertex map onto our plane for us. Great, now this is where the magic starts to happen. We've got this use fields tab and this is where we're gonna start having a bit of fun. So let's enable that. And one thing that's gonna come pre-built in the field is this freeze layer. And what this freeze layer would be doing, if we had already made a selection prior to setting that vertex weight, this freeze would just be doing exactly what it says and just freezing it in state for us so we wouldn't have lost it. In this case, we didn't have anything selected. So this freeze layer, if I turn it on and off, it's actually not doing anything. It's actually not doing anything. We don't have anything selected yet. So to drive our selection, we're actually gonna be using a field object. Now, if I, if I click and hold here, you can see we've got our field objects. This is basically the old fall off system. We've got a couple of extra tabs, our special layer, as well as the modify layer. And in this case, we're actually not gonna be dealing too much with them for this animation. If that freeze layer wasn't there, you could actually come into your modifiers and drop it in. All right, so to start with, I'm gonna drop in a spherical field into my field layers here. And now you can see wherever I move this spherical field within our scene, it's actually affecting, it's actually affecting the selection within our vertex map. All right, nice. I'm just gonna undo that so we get that back to zero. Now in those examples, I had a little text-based thing set up and I think that's what we're gonna have another look at. But to start with, let's grab our spherical field and we've got quite a big size here at the moment. I'm gonna pull this down to five. And that's gonna really tighten up our selection right in the center there. Now at the moment, our spherical field is set to max. Now what this would mean is that nothing beneath it is gonna have any effect. Now this freeze layer, as I said earlier, was there to help us store any of our previous selected points. Now we didn't have any points selected, but this freeze layer is still gonna come in handy for us because it's gonna help us get some of that nice soft motion. So to start with, let's go up to our spherical field and I'm just gonna add this in our blending mode. And you might notice as I move this around our scene, we're still not getting, you might actually notice we're not seeing anything different. So let's jump back into our vertex map and come down to our freeze layer. And at the moment, the mode we've got on this is none. Now, if I, if 
I toggle, now if I toggle this selection here, we've got a few different modes. And the one that we're going to be having a play with to get that nice motion is the average. And a nice way to think about the average is it's blurring our selection. I'm also going to tick auto update. And now what you'll notice is when I move our spherical field around the vertex map here, that selection is slowly growing and fading off into the distance. We're no longer just getting a selection directly where our spherical field is. We get a little bit of a blur. We get a little bit of a blur and decay happening in our selection. All right, I'm just going to undo so we can get our spherical field back to our center there. What I'm also going to do is just come down here to the radius. So we've got a radius of 10 at the moment. I'm going to shrink this down. And what I found is something about four worked quite nicely when working with a spherical field of a about the size we've got at five. I'm gonna hit play again and start moving our spherical field and you can see we're getting a much tighter fall off and blur from our selection now. It's no longer going as wide. This is something I found worked, worked and looked a bit nicer for the, for the end result that we're going for. Great, so we've got our spherical field set up in our vertex map here and we're using that freeze to help blur that selection. Now what we wanna do is set this up so we can follow some text. So what you're going to want to do next is set up a little spline. I've got myself here a little ampersand, and this is what we're going to use to press into our plane via that vertex map. If you don't have a spline set up but still want to follow along, come up to your spline field here and grab yourself a star or even a flower. Something like that's going to make for some really fun results. All right, I'm going to re-enable our plane and spherical field here. I'm going to grab my spherical field, come up to tags, Cinema 4D tags, and tell it to align to spline. And in our spline field here is where, you want to, is where you're gonna to wanna to feed your spline that you've set up. Now at frame zero, I'm gonna add a keyframe for 0% position. And then I'm just gonna come forward, maybe about two seconds in our timeline and increase this to 100%. Nice, now as I scrub through, that spherical field is aligning to that spline. Great. I'm gonna re-enable our vertex map here. Come down to frame zero, and with our free selected, I'm just gonna clear. Because we're setting up a new animation, because we're setting up a new animation, sometimes it can be best just to clear that and start fresh. Let's hit play and have a look at what we've got. Now at the moment, nothing is being selected. And if we just pause that there, I'm gonna jump out of my camera. And I'll hit NA to hide our polygons there. If I spin around, you can actually see that our spline is up in the air, so our, our spherical field isn't large enough to be actually touching any of the polygons in the plane. Now, this is okay to start with because what I found, it's almost kind of nice to have no selection and then you get a little bit of a build up. So let's grab our spline. I'm gonna hit a keyframe at frame zero for its position on Y. I'm gonna jump into my four views for a second. Just frame it up on the right view here. I'm going to come forward about 10 frames in our timeline here. And I'll just pull our spline down until it aligns with our plane there. I'll re-keyframe it on Y. Now we've just got that little bit of a fall. And as it does, you can see here in the right view, now our spherical field is perfectly aligned with our plane again. All right, let's jump back into our perspective view, up into our camera, and let's take a look at this. Make sure we have our vertex map selected so we can see what's going on. All right, nice, look at that. We, we started getting a bit of a shape here. Now, what you might notice is we, we're almost getting some gaps here. It's looking a little bit steppy. And for the end result, this will be noticeable. Although it ends up blurring out, we kind of want to avoid any of that steppiness to begin with. And there's a couple of different ways we can work around this. At the moment, our spline is set up to be adaptive. If we change this to something like uniform, I'll rewind this. We're going to get a much more even speed as it goes along this entire spline. And although we're still getting a bit of steppiness, I actually wasn't loving how that animated. Then I'm going to try subdivided. Rewind, hit play again. So I kind of like that. The way that the way that the points are distributed along the spline will affect how the spherical field animates along it. And I actually kind of like how it slows down along this little top arch here. Get a little bit of a builder as it flies back down through. Now, although we're still getting some of that step in us, I think 
all we're going to need to do is grab our align to spline. I'm just going to pause that there for a second. I'm just going to pull this forward to 90 frames. That's now three seconds of animation. I'm going to increase our timeline just so we've got a little bit more to look at here. Grab our vertex map again just so we can see what's going on. And look at that. We're now getting a far more even flow as it works its way along the spline. Still a little bit steppy. We could push it a little bit further again. I'm going to try maybe 110. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that is going to work quite nicely for where we're going with this. All right, I'm going to pause that there for a second. Now you can see we've kind of got this backwards S shape selected at the moment. But if I jump out of our vertex map and even hide our and even hide our spline, you're going to notice nothing's actually happening to our plane. Although we're getting that selection, nothing's been affected here. But what's great is now that we've got this selection, we can use it to drive fall off. So a really simple way to demonstrate this, I'm going to hit Shift C and type in Displacer. I'm going to feed this displacer as a child of my plane. Let's enable that. And in the shading, I'm just going to add color. Now, because this color is 100% white, what we're getting is 100% effect of whatever we set our height to here. I'm just going to go negative 10. And what that's done is dropped it in our scene. You can see our spherical field isn't actually touching our plane anymore. Let's go back to frame zero jump back into our camera. But now if we go into our displacer and into the fall off tab, we can drag and drop this vertex map. And now as I hit play that, wherever we're getting our vertex map selection is where we're getting displacement happening in our plane. And I, and I think this is really fun. Now it's looking a little bit rough in a couple of those spots. I'm just gonna pause that there for a second, hit shift C again, and just type in smoothing. Now I'm going to apply this to our plane, but after our displacer, just as a child of the plane, a sibling to the displacer. Let's rewind, hit play again, and have another look at this. Look at that, we're getting some really nice fluid motion as this spherical field works its way along that spline. Now with this displacer, all we're actually doing is sending our plane backwards 10 centimeters in height. We can go even further if you really want to exaggerate the look. I'm going to take that back to minus 10 for us. And if we jump into our vertex map here, we've still got full control over how this blur ends up looking. So if we increase our radius back up to something like 10, I'm going to click off it. You can now see we almost get a smoother, softer, more fluid finish to our, to our animation here. Now, although we start to lose a lot of the detail of what we're actually tracing, So if we pull that radius back down, I think four was working quite nicely. Yeah, we get a much tighter wrap and I think that's, that's looking pretty cool. Now to finish this off, like you saw in those little tests, rather than just seeing, rather than just having this spherical field drive the fall off, we had a little, we had a little sphere following along for the journey. So let's grab a sphere. I'm going to make it five centimeters in its radius. So it's exactly the same as our spherical field. We can then grab this sphere, make it a child of our spherical field, hit shift C and I'm going to type in PSR and this is going to reset that PSR of our sphere to that little fall off there, to our little field there. And what's great now is if I hit play, thanks to that sphere being a child of the fall off, it's now going to follow wherever it goes. All right, guys, I hope that was a bit of fun. Nice quick one today for us. Real simple setup, but I really hope to dive in a lot more and really play with these vertex maps. As you can see, this is purely scratching the surface using just a spherical fall off with the freeze modifier. And I hope you can see that just using it in its most basic state allows you to get some really nice animation. And I'm really excited to see what you guys can create with it. All right, thanks again. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Oh, the old fans.
Oh, they're all your fans. They're not mine. <laughs> I do the old like and subscribe. Jin, hindage. Sindog. Yeah. Here we go. Warm up. <laughs> you know you like Sean. Give him a like. Show him some love. And subscribe. To your everyday hero. Thor. The god of Render. <laughs> <laughs>